Hey everybody, this is D Hunter bringing another action figure review today. We're going to be looking at the McFarlane DC Multiverse, the Human Zoo Animal Man. This is a gold label Target exclusive. I printed him on the Target app and he arrived today. So let's take a look at the packaging. As you can see, the top 22 moving parts McFarlane Toys, ages 12 plus. Gold label collection. A gold label figure is simply a retailer exclusive, whether it be Walmart or GameStop. This particular gold label is a Target exclusive. DC Multiverse, Animal Man. Here he is in the package. Looks like he has a bunch of alternate hands, including this animal, sort of claw or talon hand. He has a Wolverine. Then he has a display stand and a collector's card. One side of the package, Animal Man from the Human Zoo. Other side, Animal Man. At the bottom, there's his barcode. And at the back, here's Animal Man posed up from the comics. So with no further ado, let's open him up. All right. Now that this figure out of the package, here he is with all the accessories laid out. He comes with a display stand, a collector's card, a wolverine, and then four alternate hands, totaling six interchangeable hands. But before we take a look at all that, let's talk about the figure. So this is Animal Man. His real name is Buddy Baker. A lot of time he's considered a joke. He's a D-lifter member of the Justice League. He got his powers by being too close to an exploding extraterrestrial spaceship, and he now has the ability to temporarily borrow powers from nearby animals. He could fly like a bird, he could become extremely strong like an ant and have the proportionate strength. A lot of time he's portrayed with a jacket on, and we might get another version in the future. I've seen a lot of people planning customs already. He's done on the Blue Beetle Booster Girl body, so let's take a look. I'll start with his face here. Hair looks pretty good. It's yellow. He's got the signature sort of triangle glasses. His mouth is exposed. A for Animal Man on his chest. He has this weird sort of talon hand, and thank God he has a regular hand instead. Like I said, it's the Blue Beetle Booster Girl body. A very basic body. Nice all-purpose body for a lot of figures. Double jointed elbows, double jointed knees. Kind of thin, kind of small. Not bad. As a whole, the Blue Beetle Booster Girl body is pretty good for a character like him. Not too important. But they really should have gone with the jacketed version, and they already have the parts to do that easily from numerous figures. And a closer look at his face and head sculpt, I don't see anything wrong there. They did a pretty good job. The hair, the glasses, signature Animal Man style. And here's the figure broken down as far as he can go, with all of his removable parts detached. Now check out his accessories, starting off with the boring stuff. Here's his display stand. Typically we front on display stand we've seen a million times before. It's very thin, very basic, but it gets the job done. And now for his collector's card. As you can see, it's an image of Owlman, but this version has the jacket on, so I think there's hope to possibly get a future version like this. Owlman from the Human Zoo. On the back side, there is a description, and it talks about his origin, but doesn't really talk about his powers all that much. Now let's look at his hands. He has a total of six of them, three left hands and three right hands, one of which is like a giant bird's talon or claw. Here he is with his first pair of hands. These are his fists. Here's his second pair of hands. This is a pair of outstretched hands, completely flat. They look like flight hands, although animal can't fly, unless he's in close proximity to a flying animal of sorts. Maybe he could use his hands to pet his wolverine. And here's his last pair of hands. His left hand is a gripping hand with a trigger finger, and his right hand is this giant bird sort of claw thing. And then for his last accessory, this is a Wolverine. I could see a lot of Marvel Legends collectors perhaps getting one of these for a companion for Wolverine. Now this thing has zero articulation, which is very disappointing. It has sort of a rubbery feel to it. Now, the sculpt of the hair, very nice. Paint job's also pretty good. I see some brown, some darker brown, etc. He's got the tail on the back. Four different paws, you're going to stand flat on the ground, open, sort of a screaming mouth, little ears, eyes, nose, etc. It's cool, but man, they could have at least made it a little bit articulated. Here's a look at Animal Man petting the Wolverine with his open hand. Just doesn't look quite right. And since we're on the subject of Animal Man and animals, I was curious, how many different animals did McFarland put out in the DC Multiverse line? Here are all the ones I could think of. We have Lobo's dog, two crypto super dogs, a little joker fish, the mutated bat, the wolverine, the green hawk or eagle that killed Beast Boy, the octopus, and then they build a horse. Now there are other animals in line, but how far do you want to take this? 
Do count Aquaman Sea Dragon. That's kind of a made-up creature. Do count Star the Conqueror. This giant oversized starfish. Where does it end? Thanks for leaving me out, you filthy animal. Now I'm going to check out the similarities and differences between this Animal Man figure and the Blue Beetle figure. This body's been used many times before, so let's take a look. So, starting with their heads, of course their heads are completely different, nothing reused there. But if you go further down, the torso is exactly the same, so is the stomach area. You can tell because the signature two abs on the top part sculpted separately from the rest. The arms, the forearms, the hands, exactly the same. The diaper piece, a little bit different, Blue Beetle has a belt. And the legs, exactly the same. Now, he has a sculpted boot cut here where they just simply painted a different boot line on top. That's annoying and lazy. Still, both figures look fantastic if you ask me. Now that we've taken a pretty good look at both the figure and his accessories, now for his height. From the bottom to the top of his head, staying at about 7.1 inches tall, which can translate to 18 centimeters. And now for his articulation. Starting with his head, of course, you can rotate from side to side. You can look up, not very much, down a little bit more. You can tilt his head from one side to the other. Shoulders, a ball joint, goes out more than 90 degrees. Up, down, around, all that good stuff. He's got a butterfly joint between his shoulder and chest, increasing the range of motion and covering the large gap that would be there. Bicep cut below that. Double jointed elbows. His wrists can rotate and it's going to be hinged. He's got a ball joint in his torso, rotate around, forward and back. Another one in his waist, rotate around, forward and back, giving him pretty good range of motion in his torso area. Legs, complete as a splits, McFarland style hip joints. Rotation is non-existent. They go forward that much, back not much at all. Double jointed knees, and then his ankle, forward and back. Rotate, tilt, rock. And of course, to articulation, here's Animal Man in a chuckle type setting. He's reaching out to his animal brethren. Here he is, petting his wolverine, one of his favorite animals. The animals are coming from all over. They hear his call. And like I said, animals are coming from the woodworks. They're all coming toward the Animal Man. And even Captain Carrot here gives his seal of approval. Now let's check him out. Next is one of their action figures. Starting off with one of their McFarland DC Multiverse figures. Here's Animal Man, next to Booster Gold and Blue Beetle. These were the first two figures to utilize this body, which has become sort of a blank canvas for some of the DC Classics figures. I like the body, but it's not appropriate all the time. Here are all the figures currently to utilize the Blue Beetle Booster Gold body. There are a total of nine of them, and we have plenty more upcoming in the near future. The next one is going to be the Nightfall, Nightwing, and then a couple figures they revealed today. The Crisis on Infinite Earths, Kid Flash, and Psycho Pirate use the same body as well. Looking forward to those for sure. I would consider Animal Man to be a D-lister of the Justice League. He's often considered a joke. Here he is, next to a bunch of other D-listers, or lower members of the Justice League. Now let's check him out. Next to some other recent Target exclusive figures. Here he is, next to Red Tornado. Animal Man and Red Tornado were the newest wave of Target exclusive gold label figures. Before that, they released Midnighter and Wave Rider. And before that, the stealth suit Aquaman. Here's Animal Man, next to both versions of the Target exclusive Supergirl. And then here, next to the Target exclusive Dead Man, Sinestro Corps Batman, Ted Corps Blue Beetle, and Impulse. They also released an unmasked Michael Keaton Batman from The Flash last year. Target also released the Cineo Comic Con exclusive Superman vs. Doomsday 2 pack. They also released the Target exclusive Joker Eyes Dark Knight Trilogy Wave, collect a build, a Joker Eyes Bane. And here he is, next to some more Target exclusive Joker Eyes figures. My Joker Eyes Batgirl's on the way as well. And finally, here he is, next to the Target exclusive Flashpoint Wave, collect a build Cyborg. And I believe those were all the Target exclusive figures from 2023. Looking forward to seeing what this year brings. Now let's check them out, next to some more recently released McFarland DC Multiverse figures. Here he is, next to the Amazon exclusive Lobo from the Deluxe Space Hog set. Here's Animal Man, next to some recent Walmart exclusive Gold Label figures. We have Owlman, Black Lightning, and then the Vampire, Robin, and Hal Jordan. And here he is, next to both the regular and Platinum Chase variants of the McFarland Cluttered Edition Wonder Woman. Then, next to the McFarland Cluttered Edition Wave 3, 
both the regular and Platinum Chase variants of Superman, Captain Carrot, and Batman as Green Lantern. And now, next to the Big Bad Toy Store exclusive, Black and White Accent, Aquaman, and Joker, here's Animal Man. Next to some McFarlane Toy Store exclusive figures, we have the Line Art Sketch Black Banta, the Deadly Duo Joker, Patina variant of Merciless, and the Heath Ledger Interrogation Room Joker. And here he is, next to the Batman and Robin movie wave, collect a build on Arnold Schwarzenegger, Mr. Freeze. Then, next to the Injustice 2 Superman, and both versions of Brainiac. And finally, next to the Darkness of Steel Batman, and both versions of the Jim Gordon Batman. Now let's check them out, next to some action figures from different various companies, so we can see how he fits in, both scale and style-wise, in case you don't know what signs you can mix them with. Since he's a McFarland toy, they're typically the 7-inch scale. I'm going to start off my comparisons with some of the larger action figure lines I collect, and work way smaller. But first, let's check him out with some of his McFarland Toys brothers. In front of you are five different action figure lines, all from McFarland Toys, all 7-inch scale. And now, next to some Jack-specific wrestling figures and some DST or Diamond Select toys. Next, here he is with some DC Direct and some NECA figures. Here's Animal Man next to a roll of toilet paper. And here he is next to some Mattel and Jazzwares wrestling figures. Then, next to both some Mezco and Mattel DC figures. And now, with some Mafex and Hasbro Marvel Legends. And finally, next to some SH figure arts and some Jazzwares Fortnite figures. So overall, Animal Man's a pretty cool figure. The colors look really good on him. The orange and the blue, they really pop. I think his face and head sculpt look pretty good. His accessories, I like the extra hands, although I wouldn't mind two gripping hands. Little talon thing, it's weird, but kind of cool. The beaver, it's cool, but I wish it could do something, move at least a little bit. I also wish Animal Man came with his jacket. That would really sort of put the figure over the top. And they already have the parts, they could easily take some from one of the red hood figures, the jacket, and the jacket arms. I'm a little bit tired of the blue beetle booster gold body, but you know what? It works. So, no real big complaints there. But between Animal Man and Red Tornado, Red Tornado is definitely the winner of the wave. If I were to rate this figure, I'm going to give him a 7 out of 10. I like him, I don't love him, but he's pretty good, I'm happy to add him to my Justice League roster. So this is D Hunter, thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I will talk to you guys real soon.